Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Luis Chavez. I'm a photographer and filmmaker based out of Southern California. And this week's video, I just wanted to go over my editing process that I use for my iMac. I previously did a video on my iPad and I just kind of thought that it would be nice to see my editing process on my desktop computer since I kind of do 50-50 nowadays, especially for the YouTube channel. So the way I like to edit my photos on my desktop is through Lightroom. And instead of using presets, which I've done in the past, uh, I kind of recently switched over to profiles, which gives you a little more control of the intensity of colors and the way that these presets are put into your pictures and it gives me a little more uh, room for me to play around with the colors that I like but if you don't want to you know play around with it so much it gives you a really nice base that you can um, use for your photos so the profiles that I like to use are from the archetype process I'm not sponsored by them or anything but I really enjoy the way that their profiles work it's film, film simulations and the pack that I have is the Kodak pack so I've been using them for a couple months and I really really enjoy uh, using them so that's primarily what I'm going to use here for my client work or for my weddings and stuff like that. I use uh, custom presets that I've developed, but you know, they're still not quite there. I'm kind of uh, still tweak the colors a lot when I'm um, working on them. So uh, I'm not going to be sharing those today, but the ones that I use a lot for my Instagram are here, the Kodak pack. So right here, I have a handful of photos that I'm going to edit for you guys. And these are with all different kinds of cameras. So I have two cameras from Fujifilm, the X100F and the X100V, the Ricoh GR3 and the Leica Q2, as well as the X-T3 from Fujifilm. So I have, just so you can see kind of the way that these profiles work in different settings and with different uh, um, cameras. So this first photo here is, was taken in Italy. My wife and I were on our honeymoon in 2018, so I brought along the Fujifilm X100F. So the next couple of photos are from this camera. So as you can see here for um, the profiles, instead of going onto the left side here, which I'll just close up real quick, um, you go to the right side in the treatment and profile uh, panel here. So the, the standard is Adobe Color usually. That's where you start off if you're using presets. But here you can go to browse once you install these presets or these profiles, I should say. And it gives you a whole bunch of packs or a bunch of different profiles. So what's really nice about these, uh, the archetype process is that you still get updates even after you buy them. So this is the normal one and then the version six of them. So I just for the sake of um, the video and the, the way that I've been editing on my photos, I'm just gonna use the normal one. So yeah, for this photo, I really, really liked the way that this um, the sun was shining on these people. So I thought it was really nice to kind of give you a base on what this profile looks like. So this one I edited with um, Portra 400. And the thing that you'll notice with these profiles is that, and like I said last time, is that it brings, up the ex brings down the exposure quite a bit. So I like to just bring it back up onto the level that's more uh, too properly exposed. So um, as you can see here, you can dial in your intensity. So if you wanna just have it a little bit of touch of uh, this profile, you can do that. But if you wanna like even go up to 200%, you can do that as well. So I usually just keep it at 100 and sometimes I dial it down and if I wanna do uh, additional edits on my own, but usually I keep it here. So this is what it looks like with Portra 400. And you know, I kinda wanna bring down th these highlights just a little bit. Um, here and I just kind of like to play around with what the exposure and everything so a lot of the stuff that I, I do is not that extreme but I just kind of want to show you guys kind of what I do so I usually gravitate towards more warmer tones so I usually do that with my photos and for this one I kind of don't want the the shadows to be kind of quite this high so I'll bring them down just a little bit here and you know I don't want to crush the black so much and what I do with some photos is I adjust things here in the presence tab. So the clarity or the dehaze, usually for uh, newer cameras, I bring down the clarity a little bit because I wanna take that digital sensor edge off of my photos. So they're just a little bit more soft and warm. I bring down the clarity, but to kind of offset that, I dehaze them just a little bit, just to kind of um, dial that in exactly how I want it. So it's not too much on one side or too much on the other. Sometimes I play around with contrast, but it's not that often, especially with these profiles because they give you a really nice base. So yeah, for this photo, this is probably how I would do it. And as you can see uh, with this profile, it really gives you a really nice uh, uh, overall image. And I was really happy with this photo. So this next photo is also from um, the same trip. And this is one of the photos I, I'm most proud of uh, that I've ever taken because uh, you know, it's, it's not something I would originally take back back then. So uh, even years later, I really enjoy this photo still. So yeah, the I used the exact same profile for this one. 
So, and actually let's do a different one so you can kind of see what these look like. So let's use Ektar um, 100. So as you can see, it gives you a totally different look than Portra 400. And, uh, and it's a little bit more, it's darker. So I usually bring that up the exposures again and I dial down the shadows just a bit or in the highlights so it's not super, super overexposed here on the, the highlights on the lower end. So yeah, the there's not much that I would change here. Maybe I will bring down, up the white balance just a little bit just to bring it, make it a little bit warmer and maybe a little less magenta. Uh, but yeah, the, as you can see the these profiles do a beautiful job at kind of bring out the colors in the scene so i i really enjoy editing with these and you know if you want to do extra stuff you can do extra things so with uh, presets even your uh, tone curve tab if you use presets from other people um, they already done all this stuff for you but if you want to have extra control after the fact you can still do it so if you want to bring up uh, you can do like an s curve here so whatever kind of edit you like to do you can still do it without having to you know um stick to you know original presets so yeah this is the way i would edit this photo and if you can see here the before and after so this is the bef this is the before and this is the after if you want to see it um here's the final product so moving on here to the next photo also here in italy with the x100v or no, x100f i should say this was also taken in italy so again i usually kept these around the same um uh, with the, uh, similar profiles, but for the sake of the video, I'll just try out something different. So let's do Portra 800 with, and with these profiles, it gives you different looks for different scanners. If you're familiar with film, maybe they'll sound familiar to you. I'm a little bit new with film, so I'm still learning, but I know that different scanners give you different um, color shifts and stuff like that. So let's do a um, Portra 800 with uh, an Arezzo scanner right here, and let's just bring up the white balance. So um, the white balance onto this one, I like it a little bit warmer. And let's just bring up the exposure just a little bit and bring down the highlights. So yeah, this is how we we'll do this photo. If anything, I'll probably bring up the, the temperature here, uh, the white balance. But yeah, it's like I said, you don't have to do much with these. And if you're like me, who just kind of wants to get better at um, not so much the editing process, but the shooting process of the photos, it's, it's really helpful to have a nice space. And if you wanna you know, go crazy with your colors, you can do so. But usually what the way that I like to edit my stuff is just I keep it pretty like a pretty nice space. And if I want to like bring down uh, clarity, like I said, I bring it just a little bit and then I offset it with the haze a little bit um, just so it's not too, too soft. But I don't have to play around too much with the contrast, which, um, you know, sometimes can be a little intense. So, yeah, this is the way that this photo would end up um, the way I would edit it. Uh, if anything, I'll bring up the exposure just a little bit longer, a little bit more. So this next photo was taken with the Fujifilm X-T3 and it was taken in Yosemite. So uh, I'll just show you what I would do with this photo. And again, with these photos, I kind of want to keep them very similar, but uh, let's just do Ektar 100, which is usually what I shoot, uh, I use for like my um, landscape photos. Um, and as you can see, it, bring that, it brought down the exposure quite a bit. So I like to bring that up. And like I said, you don't need to do much uh, with these photos. I mean, if anything, I'll fix the white balance a little bit. Um, but yeah, this is this is a finished image to me. Um, if anything, I'll bring up the shadows just a little bit. But yeah, like I said, I don't do much to these things. And if anything, I like to play around with the crop uh, just to make sure that I, I have what I want in the, in the shot. But yeah, this is the way that this photo will be edited. And yeah, so I'm happy with this photo. Here's another photo from Yosemite with the X-T3. Again, I'm gonna use the exact same profile, which is the, which is Ektar with an Arezzo scanner. And like I said, it always brings down the exposure, bring it back up. And if your white balance is not great on camera, you can just switch it off. If you shoot in raw and you know, it brings up, you can bring up the shadows and I like to bring up the shadows in this photo quite a bit here, just to get all that detail back in. And you know, it's a little askew, so I'm gonna fix the orientation just a little bit and yeah so this would be the way i would edit this photo and yeah it's, it's done so this photo was taken in san francisco california in 2020 early 2020 when i got the rico gr3 and i really like this photo because it, it's just paints a really nice scene with other people here a lot of my photos are landscape scenes of things that are going on so i really like this photo so i wanted to just bring in uh and this is still not reset so i'm going to reset it so this one um, was uh edited with portrait 400 and so i'll give you an example of 
the way I would edit this photo a little bit more. So I will bring up the exposure like I always do and I will bring up the white balance quite a bit. Um, and what I would do is just bring back the highlights just a bit so they're not super overexposed. And then I will come down here to my HSL color uh, panel or uh, option. And I would change the hue of the greens instead of doing these, you know, almost yellow greens, I would bring them back to like towards the blues. So um, just a little bit more and then I would saturate them because it's kind of like the overwhelming amount of uh, color that's in the scene. So I'd want to kind of highlight that it's it's a very green scene. So once you bring up the color here, um, I can play around with the hue a little bit more. So I'll be happy with this uh, scene because it's still a little bit warm, but the the, the greens are not so uh, yellow that it, it makes it look like it was fall. So if anything, I will bring up the shadows just a little bit more here and maybe the exposure down just a little bit more. So yeah, this, this photo is done. And if, as you can see, um, so if you wanna see this right here, this is the before and after, and then with a, a white background here. This next photo was also taken with the Ricoh GR3. And if you're familiar with my channel, you know that I uh, show this photo quite a bit, but I, I really, really enjoy this photo. And I just kind of want to show you what I did to the photo to edit it. So this photo um, was taken with the Ricoh GR3. And as you can see, here's all the settings that I used. And so um, what I did first was fix the white balance. So it's a little bit too cold. And um, as it is, I'll just bring up the exposure just a bit and I'll use the profile that I used, which I believe was Ektar 100, um, just a base one. So what I'll do here is even, as you can see here, it's even with the me bringing up the exposure, it's still a little bit underexposed. So I'm gonna bring it up even more so and bring up the shadows. So this is a pretty contrasty photo. So I wanna take some of that out. And like I said, I usually bring down the clarity quite a bit, not so much where it's like, it looks like a painting, but enough to where it softens it up just a little bit. And then I bring the the haze a little bit in just so it kind of offsets it just a little bit. So what I would do here is just bring down the highlights so I can see the Golden Gate Bridge a little bit more. And yeah, so I'm really happy with this photo. Like I said, I'm probably, I would crop it. And I think I did crop it for uh, the final edit. So the subject here is kind of off center, but I kind of wanted this to be even, the Golden Gate Bridge arches. So yeah, this is the way I would do it. And as you can see here, the before and after. It's before and after. And a lot of this is just playing around with the stuff here with the exposure and the highlights, shadows, and all that stuff. And just, you know, bringing in a profile to handle the color wise. And then just for me to be able to nail in everything else that I want. So yeah, this is the before, this is the after and with the Ricoh GR3. So this photo was taken with the X100V when I reviewed it in September. So I was up in Colorado and this photo was of some, uh, like a random trail we were at. So I, I wanna take a photo of this. So let's see what we can do with this photo. And we can either go again with Ektar, but I'm feeling let's do Portra 400 for this, uh, which is usually my base uh, that I do with a lot of photos. So here, I'll just bring up the exposure. And like I said, the white balance is not always great. So. Uh, and that's on me. So the the kind of correcting that gives you a really nice uh, feel of where the photo's heading. So as you can see, just with adding the Portra 400 and just a little bit of corrections here with the white balance and the exposure, you're still get you're already getting something uh, completely different, and that looks really pleasing. As it is, I just play around with to see if I want to bring on the highlights because I did have a Promise filter on it. So if I bring them down just a touch, it kind of takes off some of that edge. And let's see here, I just wanna bring up the shadows just a little bit. And again, I do a little bit of clarity down and at the haze here, so it kind of evens it out. As you can see here, the difference between the haze and um, let's do, and contrast, you know, it's it, it's a little bit different, but it's just my preference, what I like to do. So um, I just dehaze it just a little bit to offset the clarity. And what I would do here is kind of play around with the hues in the in the greens here so this is was taken during fall so i kind of want that yellowish tone onto the leaves so uh, that's something i would do here differently so i just brought that in there and then i would just play around with the with the um, saturations here so yeah this will be a finished image for me so this is the before and after 
this is before and this is after. So yeah, I'm pretty, uh, pretty proud, uh, pretty pleased with this image. This photo was taken in Colorado as well, but the Ricoh GR3. So I try to use this camera as much as possible for like landscape and stuff because it is pretty wide. So a 28 millimeter lens. So with, for this uh, photo, I used Ektar 100. Um, and let's do here, and I underexposed it a little bit. So this is the before. Um, underexposed it just a little bit so I can get keep that detail in the sky. So if I bring that up here and the shadows, you still get all that detail and then you can bring back some of that stuff on the in the sky. So I bring up the temperature just a little bit um, without overdoing it. So this was taken uh, at an Airbnb we had and this was the view from one of the mountains. I'm not exactly sure what mountain this is, but um, I really want to take a picture of that. So um, yeah, this was a, a landscape that I was really proud of. So this is everything that I would do. Maybe I would uh, bring up the blacks just a little bit and then, so I don't have to do any, so much with the shadows. But then that's an, uh, just a personal preference. So yeah, this is a before and after here, before and after. So a lot of these photos, they don't have drastic changes, but I just like to make sure that um, I have the options when I need them. This photo was taken with the X100V, uh, also in Colorado. So I, this photo, I also underexposed quite a bit just so I can keep that um, the sunrise as it was going up. So let's do here with Portra. Let's do Portra 800 for this. Just why not? Let's change it up a little bit. So as you can see, all the detail is gone. So it's really, really underexposed. So if you just want to do here, bring that up and then just bring up the white balance so it's nice and warm. Um, that's a little too warm. But if you, like me, like to play around with the tint as well, so you have the option here to play around with tint. Um, and like I said, it was um, sunrise here, which I'm not super used to uh, seeing. So I wanted to make sure that I got a photo of that. So if anything, maybe it's a little too magenta here and I'll bring this up just a bit, just to kind of bring out the, the tones here on the, on the sunrise. And with this stuff, I have to play around with it just a little bit more because I'm not, like I said, I'm not so used to um, trying to get everything in, uh, in perspective here. So the way that I would edit this photo is I would um, bring up the shadows so I can still keep the detail here in the highlights. And I would just play around with the exposure just a little bit. And maybe I would also play around with the, the crop here just to kind of get out, get that house out of the way. So it's just more the sunrise and this house here. Maybe just a little bit more. And that looks good to me. So I'll, I'll bring down the clarity again just a little bit and I'll bring up the dehaze. Um, yeah, that looks good to me. Um, if anything, maybe I'll saturate these, um, the pasture and the greens here and play on with the hue just a little bit, but it's a little bit more overwhelming because, you know, it's sunrise, so a lot of that's hitting here. So I wanna keep that intact. So I wanna make sure that you can still see the rolling hills in the background and the foreground, you still see that uh, this nice cabin. So yeah, this is what I would do with this photo. So this is the before and after. This is before. This is after, um, so yeah. So this photo is taken with the Leica Q2 and with this photo, I just kind of wanted to warm it up a little bit. So I know that Ektar 100 is a little bit warmer. So I wanted to make sure that I had that. But with this one, I wanted to play around with the different kinds of exposure. And uh, so this is plus one and plus two. So I wanted to make sure that I can get a, um, let's do a plus, a plus one and like I said you just have to bring up the exposure just to bring all that detail back and so I wanted to just kind of look more um, Wes Anderson-y if that makes any sense so I wanted to make sure that I can get um, the the snow here and the people that were uh, looking at the sign uh, in focus so uh, what's great about the Leica Q2 is that you can crop quite a bit so um, with this photo, I wanted to make sure that I would get all this in the scene, but if I want the crop, I had the option to do that. So yeah, let's see what this looks like when it's pretty heavily cropped and you still get a whole bunch of detail here with the Leica Q2. So as it is here, um, this is probably the crop that I would do. Um, if anything, what I would also do to this photo is Photoshop this out. So after I do all my edits. If I wanted to do any photoshopping, I'd do that at the end. So this is probably gonna end up having a Photoshop job just to re remove this um, pole here. 
So yeah, I'm, I'll still play around a little bit with uh, the composition here, but I'm really happy with the way that this profile looks like with this photo here. So this is a before and after. Before and after here. So this photo was taken in Claremont, California, and what I like to do with this one is to have a lot of color in it. So just like the last photo, I'm gonna use um, Ektar 100, which is a little more punchier than Portrait 400. And what I'll do is just bring up the exposure quite a bit and bring down the shadows, I mean the highlights. So for this photo, there's not a ton that I would do. I would probably bring up the shadows just a little bit to kind of make sure that everything's nice and even. But like I said, I usually bring down the clarity a little bit. I dehaze it just to kind of add a little punch to it without adding uh, a lot of contrast. So um, I would just also try to crop this a little bit because there's a lot, a ton of stuff here at the bottom. And the main focus of this photo for me is this car and this tree here. And so I would play around a little bit with the saturation of the greens or the yellows, I should say, and then kind of see what the hues look like um, to just kind of bring some magenta in there. Uh, so yeah, yeah, this is the way that I would edit this photo and I'm really pleased with that. Um, this is a, a photo that I will share. This next photo was taken in Oxnard, California, and I want to take a photo of all these palm trees because here in California, this is what we're known for. So I wanted to make sure that I got a bunch of palm trees here on this trail, which was uh, super empty on, uh, on, on a weekday. So like I said, I'll bring up the exposure quite a bit here. Um, I think I use Portrait 400 and with this stuff, you can kind of, um, select your favorite so they're right up here so right here i have portrait 400 and i'll bring up the shadows quite a bit here just to bring that detail back in and bring the, the exposure down and yeah, i kind of hit i got the the sun kind of hitting here so i wanted to haze that a little bit so here's um a little bit of the hazing a little bit less of clarity and i'll bring up the exposure a little bit more and bring down the highlights and what i'll do is i'll play around with the uh, temperature here so just I like warmer images so I like to just make sure that it's a little bit warmer here on the on these photos this next photo took a lot more work to kind of get it where I wanted it because I overexposed it a little bit and also like I said um, the Leica Q2 doesn't retain um, highlights as well as it does the shadows so I have to play around with it quite a bit so what I did is I um, brought down the exposure just a little bit on this image and I brought down the highlights as well. And so let's see here. Um, I brought the, up the, the shadows just a little bit too, just to kind of play around with that. And so let's see here for Portra 400, it brings everything down and let's fix the temperature again. Let's do uh, about 5,700. And what's great about this, now with the dehaze, you can also get some of that um, flare you got on, I got on the lens so I can bring that out of it and I can bring down the clarity a little bit again on this photo. And yeah, I did quite a bit of dehazing on this because like I said, it's um, the lens hit my, the, the, the sun hit my lens quite a bit. So this, how I would do it, you know, with these profiles, you can also get experimental, bring them up, bring up the, the amount to, you know, 200 if you wanted to, but I usually just keep it at, at, around 100. And so the last thing I would do with this photo is I would crop it just so everything's nice and even, because my main subjects are these um, ducks here and these kids with this um, um, lady here. So yeah, this is the way I would edit this photo. If anything, I would probably, um, that's before and after, I would probably bring the saturation just a little bit just to give it a little extra something. So yeah, that's a, a finished image for me. So for this photo, I kind of overexposed quite a bit. So I wanted to just make sure that I would even it out just a little bit. So for the exposure, I mean, for the temperature here, I brought it back up and then I used Portrait 400. So it, it brought everything nice and even a little bit more. So I brought the shadows up just a bit and I kind of just brought down the whole exposure just so I can retain some of that highlight detail a little bit. But if you do it, too much, it kind of becomes unnatural. So I want to be careful with that. So with the shadows, I brought them up just a little bit, uh, but something that you can do is also bring up the exposure and just crush the shadows just to bring that um, down. So let's do that here. And what I would do is crop it because with the Leica Q2, you can uh, crop quite a bit. So I just want to make sure that everything's nice and even here on the scene. And yeah, I brought down the clarity a little bit and I'll probably dehaze it. 
and as you can see what the dehazing does if you move it around so dehazing here plus 17 that's what i would do it so if you want to see the before and after yeah i'm pretty pretty happy with this image so for this next photo, I'll just fix up the white balance quite a bit here, around 5,900. And the way I shot it, I, it was a little busy, so I cropped it. So I'm cropping this image here. Uh, and with a lot of cameras, you can't do that because there's not a lot of detail there. But with the Leica Q2, it's 47 megapixels, so there's tons of detail there. So I'll play around with the exposure uh, a bit. And let's do Portra 400. I'll still bring up the exposure even more and then I'll just raise the shadows just to kind of even it out and just bring down the highlights just a little bit so it's not overwhelming. The clarity and the haze just to see what that looks like. I think that looks great. Um, maybe I'll crop it just a little bit more so it's not the sun is not this, as distracting and then just kind of bring the crop in. Yeah, so I'm pretty happy with this image uh, overall. So yeah, that's the, that's what I would do to it. So this last photo is was of this car here, and I wanted to highlight how green everything was and the yellows and everything. So um, I used um, Ektar 100, and again, I'm bringing up the exposure here and fixing the white balance a bit. So it's, it was a little bit too cold for me. And what you can do with these profiles is you can dial them up if you want to. But again, I usually like to keep them around 100, sometimes even less than that. So I'll bring up the shadows just a little bit, but I want it a little bit more punchy. So I'm going to use the dehaze here or the contrast, whatever you prefer. So I prefer to use a little bit of both uh, here and just bring down the clarity. And what I'll do is, um, since I want the main focus is to, for the picture to be very colorful and saturated, I'll just saturate the greens a bit here. And let's play around with the hues. And I just want to make sure that I have enough highlight detail here. And what I'll do is I'll crop it a bit here just so it's you know, it's more green up here than down here because it's a little distracting to my eye. So yeah, this is the way I would edit this photo. And like I said, these profiles are great because they give you a really nice space and you're more concerned with the way that you shot the photo and instead of um, worrying about what the way that you're gonna color it in post. So my camera ran out of memory as I was doing my outro, but I just wanted to thank everybody for watching my videos so far. Uh, I recently hit a thousand subscribers, so I'm super thankful for everybody who's taking the time to watch all of my videos. So as a thank you, I just wanted to give a little giveaway of uh, some prints. So a lot of the photos that uh, you saw me edit, I'm actually doing some prints of them. Uh, so I'll put up on the screen the five prints that are available. So all you have to do to enter the giveaway is just to be subscribed to the channel and to comment which print you would like and I'll announce the winners at, during my next video in the series of my favorite photos of the month which is going to be for February so if you watch that video that's the, the video that uh, the winners will be announced and if only five people or two people or three people uh, want these prints hey uh, you're probably going to get a print so thank you so much for watching this week's video and if you're not subscribed please subscribe and if you enjoyed the video please give it a like and I'll see you next time bye